Hey guys, Squatch here. Today, we're gonna get into part two of our XL750 nine millimeter series, and we're going to get the caliber conversion swapped out of this press. Currently, it's set up on 223, so that's pretty much a big deal because that's a rifle to a pistol uh, changeover. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this 223 conversion out, and we're gonna swap in the nine millimeter uh, conversion from Dylan into this press, and this is gonna be the first step to making those nine millimeter rounds. So let's get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get this light turned off. And what I wanna do is I wanna get this fail safe rod out of the way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift the uh, ram back a little bit, pull out the, uh, the white clip, and I'm gonna pull this fail safe rod out because I'm gonna reuse that. And then we're gonna go ahead and just get this tool head out of the way. So removing the tool heads, very simple. There's two pins here. And what I would do is I'd go ahead and make sure you set those aside so you do not lose them. And if you are setting up multiple calibers and you're gonna keep this tool head set up, I would suggest getting some way to store those. And in this case, I'm gonna use a Dillon tool head stand and we're just gonna remove the tool head like so and set it out on our stand. All right, and as we work through this, it's always easier to just kind of leave this open, but uh, to make sure that I do not lose <laughs> our retainer pins here, and if uh, you guys have seen some of my other videos, they do put some spare ones in the spare parts kit, but I like to always keep an eye on where those are at at all times. So let's go ahead and move on. We'll get this uh, case feeder stuff um, out of the way, and then we'll work on the actual conversion itself. All right, for nine millimeter, we are gonna need a small pistol plate. So right now we have the small rifle plate installed. So we're gonna climb up here. And if you guys have these mounted on a bench, especially if you're on an ultra mount, you might need to get a step stool, but we're gonna go ahead and swap those out real quick. Okay, now that we're up at elevation here, uh, we need to get this large or small rifle plate, I'm sorry, out and just basically reach in and grab it. And I just grab it by the, the collar here. And one thing to note is, you know, this, this plate on the bottom has inside the case feeder, two pins and a center shaft. And the center shaft will obviously go in the center. And then the uh, two uh, pins will rest inside this slot as so. So one quick way to do this is we're gonna go ahead and grab our small pistol plate here. And I'm just gonna lay it in here. And the reason being is I'm going to grab that collar again and I'm going to spin it until I feel it engage the center shaft and then those two pins will line up. Uh, one thing to note, because this has happened to me, on the bottom of your small pistol plate, make sure that there's no spacer washer on there because it can have uh, some effect on how well your case feeder performs as I found out the hard way. So uh, let's go ahead and continue down from the top to the bottom on the case feeder stuff. And uh, we're gonna keep moving forward. All right, so we need to access um, this adapter uh, sleeve right here for our case feeder. And what I like to do is just go ahead and take this tube off. It just pops out of position like so. And a good uh, note here, guys, when you install this, make sure that the label, the Dillon label, is at the top. And the reason being is, this end right here has a nice chamfer on it. This end does not. If you put it in upside down, you're gonna get shells or cartridges, I'm sorry, hanging up here in your case feeder and it's gonna back the whole system up. So just real quick tip, make sure you keep this label towards the top. And in fact, Dylan's put an arrow here to indicate that this end needs to go up. So don't forget that. So now's real simple. This is a good time to go ahead and take our our adapter out, in this case for 223, it's the white adapter. And we also have a sleeve that goes inside up there as well. And this one's green and ironically, we're gonna put a green one back in it, but I like to keep all my bits and pieces for each caliber conversion uh, together. So we're gonna probably put another green one right back in, but for this one, we're gonna take it out and put it with our 223 conversion. The next piece we need to take out is this threaded adapter right here. It's aluminum. And if you get it too snug, uh, you may have to take an eighth inch 
uh, hex key like this and you, there's two holes here and I'll show you those here in a second. You can press it through, turn it to the left and get it to unthread. Usually I just hand tight them on and then just maybe with the, with the hex key just snug it up a little bit. But as you can see, let me get it here where you guys can see it. There's two holes there. The eighth inch hex key fits right in there. You can use that for some leverage. Now this one is the small, I believe they have a small, medium, and large. Uh, we will probably be putting another small adapter back in its place, but again, I like to keep uh, all of my caliber conversion bits and pieces together. So real quickly, where we're at right now, we have our case feeder adapter parts. We already have our uh, small pistol plate installed. So we have uh, these three pieces here, our white uh, adapter sleeve, our green adapter sleeve, and our small uh, threaded adapter that goes uh, everything for our case feeder. Now we would have the powder funnel in here, but we're going to keep that set up on that tool head. So I will not be putting that back in, but you're going to see that when we start switching over to the nine millimeter. So the next step is we got to start getting the uh, shell plate tore down. We got to get the uh, uh, locator buttons uh, uninstalled and put the new ones in. And then we need to uh, swap over the uh, case feed ramp, which I'm going to show you here in a second. Okay, we still have some case feeder stuff we got to address yet. And our case feed ramp right here. And I'm going to zoom you in uh, because it has identification on the front and the back. On one side, you're going to have the letter R. And on the other side, you're going to have the letter P. And as you guessed it, P stands for right. No, it stands for pistol. And R stands for rifle. Um, so what we need to do is take a... I believe this is a 532nd Allen key. I was right. Uh, we're gonna take this bolt out and we're gonna swap over uh, the case feed ramp so that the P for pistol is facing the front of the press. So I'm gonna get you in here and so you can see what's going on. Again, I'm gonna take my 532nd hex key here, get it into the bolt and loosen it up like so. Once I get it loose, I'm gonna hand uh, unthread it here like that and I'm going to take the ramp out just like so and again R P we're going to put the P so that it's facing us and then we're going to reinstall the nut and go ahead and snug it up and when I took this off um, I usually just keep it so that's all the way to the front. You might have to tweak this a little bit depending on, you know, if you're having any issues uh, with the ramp, not setting the cartridge. But uh, for right now, we're going to go ahead and set it back where I had it and see if we're going to need to make any adjustments later. So the last item on our case feeder parts is this slide adapter here. And it just lays in place just like so. And all I'm doing is I'm pulling the ram back slightly so I can just set it in place. So now we're ready to start moving on to the shell plate. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna get this shell plate changed over. So the first thing I'm gonna always do, I'm gonna pull out these buttons here, these brass buttons, and these are number threes, and I'm pretty sure we're gonna put number threes back in. But again, I wanna keep all of my caliber conversion stuff that I have for each set uh, together. We're gonna need a quarter inch Allen key and an eighth inch. And I'm going to show you why here in a second. So our goal now is to get the shell plate off of this press. All right, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and raise this ram all the way up, getting our shell plate up. And the reason being is there is a small set screw right here. I'm going to zoom in so you can take a look at it. But that set screw right here, uh, what that is, is it holds the main shaft bolt here in place. So what we need to do is go ahead and get in there and loosen it up at least a turn or so so that this main shaft we can start spinning by hand. So now that we have our set screw loose we're going to go ahead and again you don't have to take it all the way out just back it out a turn, turn and a half so that we can unscrew our main shaft here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to push down here because our uh, uh, case spring here that actually deflects our case deflector spring that deflects our spent cartridges into the chute 
I'm just going to hold down on that in the shell plate with my index finger and hopefully get my paws out of the way here so you can see what's going on. But I'm going to go ahead and remove uh, the main shaft right here. I'm going to set it aside for the time being. And I'm going to reach in and pull out our ejector spring. I'm going to set that aside. So now that I have that removed, I can pull out my shell plate. And the easiest way to do that is just kind of give it, lift up the ram a little bit so that your slide bracket for your case feeder comes out of the way. And then we have our shell plate removed. All right, so now that we have our shell plate removed, this is a good time to get in here and do some inspection. Uh, make sure everything looks good. Take some compressed air, hold down this detent belt, because there may be some powder uh, that's got down in here, and this is also a good time. Get you a towel and start, and just wipe everything down real good. Just like so. Got everything wiped down. And uh, one thing I like to do is I take a little CLP and I put a few drops here on our index ball like so just to give it some uh, lubrication. And then I'll put a couple drops just around the where the shell plate rides just to give it a little bit of lubrication before we get uh, putting this back together. All right, so we have all of our 223 caliber conversion parts in the box that it belongs. We have our case feeder adapters, our index buttons, and our shell plate. So this conversion is ready to go back on the shelf. All right, looking at our 9mm conversion here, we have a number 5 shell plate, our number 3 index buttons, our small threaded adapter, our green uh, case feed adapters, and our number 5 cartridge slide here. Now you'll notice in this we have a powder funnel. So we're going to be installing that in this series. But so now what I like to do, since we've started from the top and worked our way to the bottom, we're going to work our way from the bottom and work our way up. So the first thing we're going to do is get this shell plate and these index buttons installed. All right, so now that we have our, our shell plate uh, holder exposed here, the top of our RAM, uh, one thing to note, this detent ball right here. On our shell plate, like so, you're going to see that there is five corresponding detent holes here. So what I like to do is go ahead and take our, again, number five shell plate for our nine millimeter and just kind of set it into place and rotate it around until I feel that detent ball grab uh, one of those holes. And another thing that I do is I'll go ahead and take this ejector spring. There's a hole here on the back side where, that, where this tab goes in. I will set it into place into the hole like so, and just kind of center it up right there. Now, the next thing we need to do is take our main shaft and install it. One thing that I always do, and I'm just in the habit of, is I just put a little bit of oil on there. And again, I'm using CLP. Just want to make sure that that machine surface uh, stays lubricated. And also just to keep some, some lubrication on there to keep it from rusting. And I'm going to put that down into the hole. And I'm just going to hand thread it down I'm going to try to do this bass backwards here <laughs> so you guys can see, but I'm threading it down by hand and this spring will start to align itself uh, with the top or the head of this main shaft bolt. So once I get it pretty close, I want to just kind of double check, make sure I'm spinning. And now I'm going to raise the ram up and we're going to set that detent, or I'm sorry, that lock nut uh, that's in here or set screw. And we're also going to set our shell plate deflection um, with that D, or I'm sorry, with that set screw and adjusting this main shaft bolt here. All right, so we want to get our deflection here out of our shell plate. And how we do that is we need to, I'm going to raise this frame up here so you guys can see this. We have our deflection, we have our quarter inch hex key, and what we want to do is start tightening this ever so slightly a few you know degrees at a time until we start getting as much of this deflection out as we can and what I usually do is I'll just go ahead and snug it up all the way down not tight but till I feel it grab 
and I notice I have no deflection, but you'll also notice that when I set the ram down, uh, the ramp here that slides on this bearing, it's not letting it spin. So what I'll do is I'll back it off ever so slightly until I can get that shell plate to index and then check for my deflection. And you're never going to get all of the deflection out. So you just got to kind of make very minor adjustments until you get as much of it out as you possibly can. So again, it's a degree at a time. And once you reach that spot where it's too much, the case, or I'm sorry, the index wheel or ramp will not allow the shell plate to go any further. So then you got to back it out just ever so slightly. And we have very, very minimal deflection, if any. So at this point, we're going to take our eighth inch hex key and we're going to snug up that set screw down there. And again, I use the short side of the wrench here because we don't need to over torque this and just get it snugged up like so. And we have our shell plate moving freely and again, very, very, very little uh, deflection. So at this time, we're also going to go ahead and put our brass locator tabs in there. We're going to take our number five cartridge slide here. And again, I'm just going to pull back on the ram a little bit. This goes in just like I'm going to throw it in here, just like this. So with the beveled end towards the case feed um, slide, and again, it just slides in drops into place like so. So now we we have our shell plate installed, our locator tabs, and our slide uh, right here for our case feeder. So now we're going to go ahead and install our threaded adapter here for our case feed, and it goes right in this hole right here, and it's threaded. So we're going to get it started, and again, you do not have to go crazy on this. Just get it snugged up, and again, you can take an eighth inch hex key, put it through the two holes, and just, just snug it up. Don't go crazy on it because if you get it too tight, you're going to be getting channel locks to get it off and then you're going to you know, mar the surface on it. Moving on with our case feeder, we need our small uh, green adapter here and it's going to slide into place just like so and it's literally just going to slide in like that. And now we're going to take our, our large case feed tube here and keep in mind guys, there is a locator tab here and we want to take the uh, reduced down end with the locator tab and place it just like so. And if you guys can see this, there's a cutout here where this lo locator tab goes and we're just going to set it in position like so. Just press it in, it's a press fit. All right, so the last piece of the puzzle is our case feed tube here. Again, make sure this label's on top we're going to slide it slightly into our green adapter here and then snap it into place and go ahead and just pull down on it a little bit to make sure everything sets into place, but we're done. All right, so let's recap. So the first thing we did is we got that tool head out of there that was set up for 223. We're going to set that aside. Uh, we got our 223 caliber conversion completely uninstalled from this press starting at the case feeder working our way down to the shell plate. We got the nine millimeter caliber conversion set up from the shell plate up to the case feeder. Now you don't have to go in that order, but it's just my method and that's what I'm presenting to you guys. The only thing that we didn't talk about that comes in your caliber conversion is the powder funnel. And we will talk about that once we get into setting up our powder measure and establishing that case bell. If you guys have any questions, feel free to hit me up, squatchreloading at gmail.com. You can find me at Facebook and Instagram at Squatch Reloading. And if you like these videos, if you like our content and you want to stay right up to date as soon as we drop a video, hit that subscribe button, click on the little bell for notifications. That way you're always up to date. If you are interested in supporting the channel or maybe some behind the scenes stuff or maybe some live stream, or maybe some chit chat uh, between me and you, uh, consider joining our Patreon page, and that's patreon.com forward slash squatch reloading. I'll put a link in the description below. But until next time, guys, God bless.